Hi, I'm Tony Oliver. I'm a voice actor, a director, and sometimes a producer. <laughs> Legend. So th did you know that on IMDb you're on the, like, the top 20? I just saw that. I was like, okay. And then I'm like looking at your credits. I'm like, okay, I see that. Yeah, it's, it's mostly because I've been here forever. <laughs> uh, I am, I, if you can see, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a huge uh, Power Rangers fan. And so when you, when you start working for the Bond Entertainment, mm -hmm. like, a little bit, even, even before that, so with, with uh, you voicing uh, Rick Hunter, mm -hmm. so like, how, how groundbreaking was that as far as the, the, the normal Saturday morning cartoons and then all of a sudden Robotech hits and, and you're on everybody's TV screen as, as Rick? Um, I, a lot, it, it had a more impact than I expected it because, first of all, nobody had heard of anime. They were still calling it Japanimation back then. Um, and um, the, the impact, it was interesting because it was my first big gig. It was my first series, and I'm a I'm brand spanking new actor. I've been struggling for years to try to get a job. And so I was really focused more on that. Please do not lose this job. Don't get fired. Do, don't suck. That was mostly what I was focused on. So I, I didn't really look at impact. Looking back now, with, with some hindsight, um, the impact of that, ha it had a lot, it, it, first of all, we didn't go Saturday morning, it was, it was Monday through Friday, so, which made it a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, also, because we were on independent channels, uh, it ran at different times of the day, so it wasn't able to get a really solid audience in any one time of the day, but it affected an awful lot of people in that they'd never seen stories like that before. The storytelling was much deeper than American cartoons. Remember back then it was, you know, Happy Clowns and Smurfs. Right. <laughs> and uh, and so uh, uh, um, the uh, so that 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 was a big impact, and people liked the fact that there was a it was an ongoing space opera essentially, um, and um, and so it 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 kind of opened up the industry a little bit. It it opened things up not only for me as an actor and for the other actors that were working there, but started bringing mainstream audience to the anime table, and that over the course of twenty years has created what we have now. So I, I like to think of we were kind of the first to kind of like rip open the door a little bit, and so everybody else had come barreling on through. <laughs> Dude, when you say clowns, are you, are you talking about Bozo the Clown? No, I'm talking about Little Clowns of Happy Town. There was an ABC show back then. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of little, there was Smurfs, there was Scooby-Doo, there was all sorts of kind of odd stuff at the time. <laughs> uh, so, so fast forward to working for the Bond Entertainment again, like you said before. Huge Power Ranger fan. So you, I mean, as far as you helped produce it, you've grown on it, you knew you were uh, a voice on it, like Yoda Saba. Um, and when I when I started seeing that, it's like, oh yeah, I just remember like uh, Brian Cranston. So you worked with Brian Cranston. No, I actually left the show before he came. Okay. Before he came, yeah. So uh, I wish I, I wish I'd, I I was uh, I think I was gone two seasons before he showed up. Um, so uh, I, ne I never got to work with him. What, 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 look, what we did get to do was was create a show nobody had ever done before, okay? and, and and that was the difficulty and the fun of it is that we had to invent a new style of storytelling that incorporated Japanese storytelling, but could be accessible to American audiences that like to see spoon-fed stuff. <laughs> and, uh, um, so that was the difficulty, and and frankly, we were all uh, they had been trying for eight years. It took eight years to get that show on the air. Uh, they did a thing called, uh, they tried a, a version called, based on Ultraman, uh, which I, and they, they, they made a pilot for it. It, it, it didn't do well, it didn't sell. Uh, but w that, was, that was what put together Haim Saban and, and Margaret Lowe, who ended up being president of Fox Kids. So the two of them liked that show. So when she became Fox Kids, we had an, a place to take the show that might actually take it, because everybody else looked at it and went, <laughs> no, 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 nobody's going to watch this, including most of the people at our company. They said, nobody's going to watch this. Was it either the toys that made us or the, the, the shows that made us? Because there, there was... Um, well, the toys that made us is inaccurate. Was it? Yeah. The lady who was telling all these stories about how the show was made, she wasn't in the room. I was in the room. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. So she, she, uh, she, was, she worked for the toy company. She worked for Bandai. She wasn't in the meetings when we named everything. She just wasn't there. <laughs> And she claimed that she did it. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember, but, uh, before, before 
Power Rangers, because uh, cause like uh, Marvel had a chance and they had the, um, is it Vulcan with the three uh, main characters, but they kind of passed on it, but then circle back around a show called Power Rangers. Yeah, I, I'm not sure of the toy st- the toy history of that because remember Bandai was came from Japan. They already had the toy line there. Uh, what, what Bandai did not have was a foothold in America, and Power Rangers gave them a foothold in America to now sell their toys, like a lot of them. So, uh, so yeah, so they and they they were intimately involved in the development of the show early on because we needed to to, to coordinate with that, but. You know, the, the, the show was named in the back of a bowling alley while we were shooting the pilot. Quite literally. <laughs> well, we were, look, we were, we were on the second day of shooting the pilot. Chaim gathers, we were at a bowling alley in Canoga Park, California, and uh, shooting this, this wonderful scene, which we've, if you've seen the lost episodes, and it's in the original pilot. So there's a scene where Bolt goes down the, the bowling alley. And uh, so we're shooting all that stuff, and Haim comes up to us and says, listen, the network likes what they're seeing. They're going to buy the show. So uh, we need to name it. We need to, we need to come up with some stuff, and we need to do it right now. So we all gathered in, on a table in the back of this bowling alley while they're shooting over there. And, uh, and we said, well, what are we going to call it? So, and, and somebody said, uh, I forgot, somebody said something about it. Uh, Rangers. I think uh, Ellen Levy Sarnoff, who was the development director, says, we'll call it Rangers, uh, Power Rangers or something. And he goes, no, no, we need, and I think this is what he got from the toy company. We need something with the same amount of syllables as the Mutant Ninja, as the Mutant Teenage Ninja Turtles. Same amount of syllables. So we back and forth, and somebody came up with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Same amount of syllables, and that's exactly how it got named. At the, in that same meeting, we found out we were calling everything, uh, we were calling him... Um, not Z- uh, Zordon, but uh, uh, it was called um, El- not Eltar. Um, Zoltar. Zoltar. Zoltar, uh, and uh, because, but that turned out to be the guy from the the, the toy from uh, Up, uh, uh, from Big, the machine that gives the thing from Big. That's Zoltar. So that was already trademarked. We couldn't use that. So uh, um, so we were coming up with what do we do? And I and I, I think I'm the one that said I said listen, George Lucas made up all this shit. So let's make it up. We'll call it a Zord. And we'll call him Zordon. I mean, that, I mean, literally, that's how, in, in 10 minutes, the essential stuff for the naming of the show and the conventions was done in a table at a bowling alley in the back of while we were shooting the pilot. So that's how a lot of that stuff came about. It wasn't as elegant or glamorous or nobody planned the shit. It was just, we just, we were reacting to the moment as best we could. And we happened to be right. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I, I, was, I was talking to uh, Bill Putz, and he, he mentioned, uh, like, the, so did you did you pull for uh, a black ranger no that was that was something that we decided early on completely that we wanted a, f- a fully multicultural uh, we want we wanted all the, the melanin covered you know <laughs> and uh and yeah so that was something that we all wanted it was it wasn't me or anybody else on that one and Haim saban to his credit was the one that really pushed that and he's the one that ran it to the point was that when the show was up and they were now selling it internationally. He went to Kirch Media in Germany, and they said, this is great, but get rid of the Sparks guy, get rid of the black guy. They don't want a black hero on the TV. And he told them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought that made me a fan of him in- instantly. Because <laughs> he gave, he, I always thought he was about money. But he was, to a point. Right. But that's different. You know, that was just not something he would put up with. So he eventually bought Kirch Media, which I think is funny, because Kirch was a Nazi. So he's rolling over in his grave. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, but uh, uh, it's it's look, Saban Entertainment was the most diverse place I've ever worked at. Uh, up in the executive suite, um, uh, what language do you want to hear? It's coming out of some some thing. Our our, our office plant manager was from Ni- a woman from Nigeria. I mean, it was it's just the most. I, I heard Arabic. This is a Jewish company. There's Arabs working there. There's I mean, it, it was the most diverse place, so there was no way that that show was not going to be diverse. It just wasn't. Yeah. We did, unfortunately, do micro things, and that, that uh, Walter eventually came back, and as we talked about a little bit, little, little, you know, uh, micro. What do you call it? Not meaning to be uh, prejudiced or or bigoted or 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 stereotypical, stereotypical more, but we we did drift into that a little bit. But you got to, you know, there's a bunch of white guys writing this. We we did the best we could. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So, um, as, as far as because I, I was I was talking to the uh, more voice actors and mm-hmm. and like like 
actors that are on screen, is it natural to basically going from um, uh, voice talent to eventually direct and, and write uh, over the course of your career? It depends on, I mean, everybody's different. Um, I, I, I had the added thing is I had a family. I had a kid, a wife and kids, and you know, at some point the, the acting wasn't enough. And, uh, and so I had to go behind the scene a little bit, but I didn't, I wanted to get paid to be creative. And I really didn't care. I, I kind of, uh, at first I had to be an actor, but after a while I was like, I don't care. I just want to be creative to be creative. I don't want to, I don't want to be a salesman. I don't want to do that. Um, and so that, that kind of, uh, I forgot your question. Uh, oh, as far as like, uh, over, over the course of, if you're starting out in, Oh, oh, yeah, moving that way. So I, I deliberately made the choice to move behind the camera because it was, and then once I had the success with Rangers, I, you know, I'll, I'll continue to act, but but I'm not going to give that up because that's, that, you know, it's afforded me, I could buy a house. I was, I was able to raise my kids. I could, I was actually making a pretty good living at it. So it's, it's not, everybody doesn't do that. Some do. Uh, I think the people who are, who are extraordinary actors don't need to, and they don't. Um, because they're they're so involved in this, but those of us who are kind of yeoman actors, and uh, you know we're we're competent, we're professionals, we're pretty good at what we do, but we're not, you know, we're not Tom Hanks. Uh, going behind the camera is uh, is is a great way to go, and uh, so some of us do, not everybody. Uh, so uh, fans of your work and all this, like, how would they be able to reach out to you and, and uh, what's being coming down the pipe for you guys? Well, um, I have a website. It's TonyOliverEntertainment.com, but it's really mostly what my resume is. Um, uh, just keep uh, – Anime News Network is where most everything gets announced. I find out about some things that I'm doing from them before I actually find out from the company. But um, uh, for me, I, I don't really do a lot of fan emails and stuff like that. If you follow my Facebook, uh, the Tony Oliver Voice Actor, uh, I do a lot of posting there, occasionally on Instagram. And what I have coming up, um, I can't talk about. Um, I'm I'm doing some American cartoons right now uh, as a director, and one of them is for Netflix, and it's uh it's based on a movie. Um, it's uh it's pretty cool. They're spending a lot of money on it, so uh, I you know we're we're actually getting the things we need, and uh, so hopefully that'll be out early next year, and then I'll be able to talk about it. And I'm a Ghostbuster. I just uh, it's coming out tomorrow, uh, 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 Friday the the the, DV, the, uh, the the physical game for the new Ghostbusters game. Okay. And I am a Ghostbuster in that game. Which which one? I'm Ghostbuster number eight. I'm a playable character. I'm the guy that talks with this bad New York accent. <laughs> uh, oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have two things before they, before they kick me out. I yeah. uh, appreciate your time. Thanks for the insight, because I, I thought that was quite a bit to just like, like when I found out it was all pirates. You're like, um, I'm trying not to geek out over it too much, but I um, appreciate that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, too.